The DOS era of PC gaming is a pretty mysterious realm. I mean, can you believe developers used to just give away chunks of their games for free so they could create hype and hopefully get people to buy the full thing? What kind of pro-consumer bullshit is that? But yeah, shareware, as it was known, was huge back in the day. The model was already being used throughout the 80s for various software, but it's probably most widely known in the gaming sphere from companies like Apogee and id Software. It's how stuff like Commander Keen, Wolfenstein 3D, Doom, Duke Nukem, and countless others found their foothold into millions of gamers' floppy drives. People, of course, remember all those classics, but there are exponentially more that aren't remembered at all. Stuff that was either just a shovelware cash grab or wasn't successful enough to warrant many people making the purchase for the full game. That brings us to the topic of today's video, Plague of the Moon, a dark and unnerving game that deals with witchcraft, occult rituals, animal sacrifice, black magic, and more. It also has a development cycle that's shrouded in mystery. Spooky. Plague of the Moon is a point-and-click adventure game where you are shunned by the outside world, forced to live a bleak and lonely existence. And no, it's not about the life of a YouTuber who makes content about obscure and forgotten games. It was developed by Rebelsoft and Gabe Machia, and released for DOS platforms in 1994. It was also the only game developed by both Machia and Rebelsoft, leading me to believe that it was a one-man effort. In Plague of the Moon, you play as Alucarda, the daughter of the witch Margaret. Margaret was alive during the time of the Black Death, and, suffering from the plague herself, accepted a deal with the devil that saved her life, and turned her into a powerful sorceress. Years later, Margaret was mercilessly burned at the stake by a religious zealot known as the Bloody Judge. With her dying breath, Margaret put a curse on the kingdom, and urged her daughter to avenge her. With this, Alucardo's own journey into witchcraft and black magic begins. Yeah, so as some of you have so astutely observed and commented, I am a Grimbeard fan. I have to admit, I've stolen a few tricks from his bag of, uh, tricks. But I would hope that he, well, you know, who the hell am I kidding? He's never gonna watch my videos, but I would hope that those of you who watch both his and my videos would see it only as a form of flattery, and not just me, you know, completely ripping him off. I like his stuff. I thought there should be more stuff on YouTube that has a similar vibe. So, here we are. Having said that, this is a video about an obscure point-and-click game, so I guess my transformation into a full-on Grimbeard ripoff channel is complete. But, since we're doing a whole credit where credits deserve kind of thing, this game was recommended to me by Jan Pyers, who posted about it in a comment on the Lunacy video. Link in the description below. Jan outlined the premise of the game and its enigmatic origins, which immediately had me intrigued. So thank you once again, Jan, for the recommendation. Apparently, there was only ever a shareware version of Plague of the Moon made, and if a full version does exist, it's remained stubbornly absent from the internet. You can easily download the shareware version, though. It's available through My Abandonware and other such sites. Some of them even come with a pre-configured version of DOSBox to run it, so you don't have to fuss with line commands. Mine did not, so I had to do a quick tutorial to remember how to get games to run in DOS. But I actually like doing this stuff. I never had a purely DOS-based computer back in the day. I think the first computer my parents ever got had Windows 3.1 on it. But I've messed around with DOS before, and i played a lot of DOS games within the last few years. I always like how tactile it feels to use, and how fickle it can be to get things running. Something about it just feels neat, even when you can't figure out the shorthand for files and fuck up typing constantly. Shit. God damn it. Come on, fingers. You're better than this. No! After getting the game to boot and getting to the main menu, the music will eventually kick in. Uh, I guess this is the way it's supposed to sound. I can never really be sure with a lot of DOS games because modern computers don't really have sound cards anymore. Whereas back in the day, there were different brands of sound cards that you would install, each with their own library of sounds. So if a game was made for a Roland MT32 or a Sound Blaster card, it would sound slightly off when not used with that card specifically. This is something that's caused a bit of an issue when running DOS games on modern PCs, even with DOSBox. 
DOSBox can handle Sound Blaster emulation, but the Roland card is a different story. Take Wizardry 7, for example. It's on both Steam and GOG, but it will play the Windows Wizardry Gold version if you just go to play the game. So you need to configure the executables to play the DOS version. And this doesn't even have anything to do with what I'm talking about, so why did I choose Wizardry 7 as an example for this? Anyway, once you get the DOS version running, it sounds like this. This is not how it's supposed to sound. It just sounds like a bunch of farts. This is because Wizardry 7 was developed for the Roland card, which has its own set of sounds and instruments that aren't emulated by the modern Windows sound font. You could download a Roland MT emulator like Munt, then scour some shady corners of the internet for the BIOS file to give you access to the sound library. Then configure Windows to recognize any games compatible with it to run through the emulator instead of the Windows sounds. After which you can select the Roland from the audio menu, then start the game, and it should sound like this. Much better, right? The same goes for the Ultima Underworld games, which make footsteps sound like you're walking on a goddamn piano. Instead of the dingy floor of an echoey dungeon. So yeah, I tried to run Plague of the Moon through the Roland sound, but only some of the effects sound slightly different. The music is still a bit ear-splitting, so I'm really not sure what kind of sound card it was supposed to run on back in the day. Aside from the sound, the game has a suitably creepy atmosphere. The color palette is muted, and the game has some gruesome artwork. The character designs are also fantastic. I love this witch with her sagging eye and the artwork for the townspeople. The enemy illustrations during combat are also great. It's not the most visually impressive DOS game out there, but its art direction definitely makes up for it. And the music, at times, can be really creepy and good. At times. Oh, those dulcet tones. Aside from its markedly dark and macabre art style, Plague of the Moon plays very much like most Sierra adventure games from the 80s and early 90s, complete with a point system and everything. Throughout most of the game, you'll be searching for key items and collecting them, talking to other characters and navigating the overworld. Some of the navigation can be a bit wonky, and you'll need to fiddle around with Alucarda's positioning to get her to go where you want her to sometimes. And there was one time where this really caused me a lot of strife, but I'll talk about that in more detail in the spoiler section. Most of the items you collect are used to mix in your cauldron to create spells that you can cast, which is a neat little mechanic. Of course, scouring the screen for all of those items and not running into certain death along the way is part of the point-and-click magic. And yeah, you're gonna need to click all over, get lost in maze-like forests, get killed because you forgot to equip the dagger from your menu, or didn't even find the dagger because it's hiding in a drawer that you can barely see, and oops, this is only the dagger that you used to cut up the dead lamb in your barn. You actually need the enchanted dagger the old hag gives you to attack enemies. Adventure games, yay. But the thing that really sets Plague of the Moon apart is the first person combat. Every now and then you'll run into combat encounters and you'll need to click on the enemies to either attack or defend. There's a rhythm to this too. It's not just click as fast as you can. Click, 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 click. It's more of a click, 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 click. Doing it in the right rhythm can potentially have you avoid taking any damage. I was pleasantly surprised by how well implemented the combat mechanics were. I fought this witch about halfway through the game who had pretty devastating magic attacks, but by keeping a steady rhythm, I was able to defend some of her spells and walk away with quite a bit of health left. After some encounters, you'll even level up your stats. 
The game has a day-night cycle, and you can only sleep and rest during night, which will refill your health. The day-night cycle is also important for advancing certain events and parts of the story. Speaking of the story, gonna break here for spoilers. So if you're interested in trying Plague of the Moon out for yourself, and trying to see it through to the end, jump to this time. Depending on how much you get lost or stumped looking for items, it's definitely about a two or three hour plus playthrough. Anyway, if you're cool, then I'm cool, and we're off to the spoilers. So after you've scoured Alucarda's home and the surrounding areas for all of the items you could find, you need to find this small house out in the wilderness. Inside is an old hag who sets Alucarda on her path to becoming a witch. But before that, you'll need to complete two tasks. The first is to collect a stone from the Valley of Shadows. Now, a place called the Valley of Shadows sounds none too inviting, but when Alucarda shows her apprehension, the hag scolds her. Like, what, you want to be a witch and you're scared of some shadows? Psh. So we head to the outskirts of a forest and enter this spooky looking cave where we're confronted by this dude who looks all dark and badass, but then you see him up close and he's got an aardvark face. Just a little aardvark man. And look at his cute little owl buddy on his shoulder. <laughs> You need to answer his questions correctly, and since this is a point-and-click adventure, there's no real indication as to which is the right one. But it's this one. The devil himself sent me here on an errand. Which is a lie, but he wanted you to lie to him. Because that's his kink, I guess, and I ain't gonna shame him. With that, he and his owl buddy say that you're alright, and can hang out in his cave for a bit. Thanks, bro. During our short stay, we abscond with one of the stones at the back of the cave, and the first task is complete. After heading back to the old hag, she tells Alucarda that her next task is to go to some palace ruins in the forest and fetch the bones of a living corpse. Again, you need to answer a question correctly, and this time it's, I am helpless against such a monstrosity. The witch commends Alucarda on her wiseness and gives her an enchanted blade, and you'll want to equip that right away. So we head into the forest and navigate this awful maze that took me like half an hour to figure out. Eventually we run into a troll blocking the way and stab him to death with our fancy new dagger. Beyond him is the palace, and upon entering is a coffin. When we open it up, a skeleton man appears. After taking him out, we can collect his bones. There are a few other items to collect further in the palace, like some mirror shards and a necronomicon. Perfect. After finding our way back out of the shitty forest and back to the old hag, the woman informs Alucarda that she needs to wait until nightfall by the megaliths so that the ritual can be performed. Something goes awry during the ritual though, and the old hag tries to kill Alucarda. Again, her trusty stabby knife makes short work of the hag. Since the old witch is dead, now we can go loot her house, which has some magic books along with a few other items. These books give recipes to spells and potions that can be concocted. Now that Alucarda is actually a witch, she can use the cauldron in her house to make spells and potions by mixing the various items we've been collecting. After making all that we can, our next destination is a church on the outskirts of the area. Alucarda isn't so keen on following the dark path she's been set on since she was betrayed by the hag, and after the friar here gets over his initial shittiness, he tells Alucarda that she's not actually the daughter of Margaret the Witch. This friar, in fact, killed the demon daughter of Margaret when she was still just a baby. So Alucarda is some kind of adopted, or more likely kidnapped child that Margaret had kept as a replacement for her own lost daughter. This might explain what went wrong at the dark ritual. The hag realized Alucarda wasn't the true daughter of Margaret after seeing the sign of God on her back, and tried to kill her. Alucarda wants the friar's help, but he tells her he needs time to think things over, and to come back in a few days. This is where the game hits a bit of a lull. You need to go back to Alucarda's house and sleep, then walk around until night so you can sleep again. I'm not sure how many times you need to do this, but to be safe, just do it a bunch so enough time passes. If you don't let enough days pass, then nothing is going to happen when you go back to the church. Adventure games. Yay. Upon returning to the church, the friar tells Alucarda that she needs to travel to hell to kill the devil himself, which she's just like, uh, wait a minute there, Skip, I'm not offing myself for you. And he says, hey, stupid, you're a witch, and I'm I'm gonna cough up a holy blade to kill the devil with, so don't even worry about it. But first you're gonna need to rid the local nunnery of evil. So we finally head to the city and make quick work of the guard out front, then use an invisibility spell to sneak through the main gate. But it doesn't even matter because some random asshole sees through the spell anyway, beats us up, and throws us in a dungeon. And hey, this is my kind of vibe. How you doing? After stealing a torture cudgel and a skeleton on some spikes, because that's her kink and I ain't gonna shame her for it, we use a gaseous form spell and Alucarda just kind of poots her way right out of the dungeon.
We enter the nunnery next and speak to each of the nuns there, asking them if they've seen anything strange. One of them, Justine, has this witty remark. Yeah, a woman all dressed in black came in here asking me strange questions. Oh, Justine. Justine. I've got a feeling about you. You bitch. We use our sense evil spell and check each of the nuns' rooms again. And of course, what do you know, it was Justine the whole time. After killing her, we can leave the city and head back to the friar to tell him the deed is done. And this is where I ran into a bug where I couldn't leave the city. I tried everything I could think of, and yeah, I was just stuck here. Dude, I was so crushed when this happened. I had already recorded a bunch of the DOS stuff for the beginning of this video and wrote the intro of the script and done the voiceover for it. Not to mention, I played this game and tried to figure out everything and recorded all this footage. I had to like step away for a couple days. I even considered just scrapping the whole thing. But finally, I just decided to take someone else's footage for the last like five minutes of this game. That's how close I was. Ugh, God, it's st it still burns me up. So this is footage from Retro Pixel Lizard and Sally's Retro Game Dungeon. They did a long play of the game. This person has dungeon in their name too, and I'm not even gonna judge the furry profile pic or banner. It's all good. So yeah, when we go back to the church, the friar gives Alicarda a holy dagger. Then we can go back home to concoct the final spell, the Gate of Hell, using dragon blood, the bones from the dungeon, and the instrument of torture. Then head back to the forest one last time. After using the Mask of the Druid spell, we find our way to the cemetery deep within the forest, and once there, cast the spell Gate of Hell. This sends Alucarda tumbling down to hell, which looked pretty funny, actually. Ah! At the bottom of the abyss, we come face to face with the devil. There are actually two ways to kill the devil. You can fight him with your dagger, or use the face of death spell if you found the ingredients and made that one. With either method, the devil goes down pretty easily. Since she's killed the freaking devil, Alucarda is remembered as Saint Alucarda and will be honored forever. Go get it, girl. Overall, Plague of the Moon is a dark and creepy little adventure game with excellent artwork, some decent eerie music when it isn't blowing out your eardrums, and it also has a sweet gothic atmosphere and pretty good combat gameplay. The item searching and collection is about on par with many other adventure games of the time, but its alchemy-like spell creation and the first person fighting really make it stand out. Still gutted I couldn't finish it on my own. It makes me wonder what else Machia had in mind for the full version of the game. If you click on the read this on the title menu, you get this dopey multi-headed dragon that talks about more artwork, a hint system, sound effects, a printed manual, and an uncensored version. But, I don't know, seems like the story was pretty much complete. I mean, you kill the devil and become a saint. Where do you go from there? Maybe that's why nobody needed to order the full version of the game. There's also an address here for you to send your $15 to. This was honestly pretty common back then. But yeah, it's just weird nowadays to see something like this. Gabe Machia seems to have no online presence that I can find. So, is he even still alive? Does he still live at 3221 Matin Lane? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, uh, this feels a bit weird. Ooh, a Mercedes. Maybe that's Plague of the Moon money. Huh, I, I mean, I, I don't know. Wait a minute, what's that? Ah! <laughs> Boy, that sure was a spooky ending. So, yeah, you too can download the shareware version of Plague of the Moon if you'd like. Maybe if you get to the end, you won't run into the same weird bug that I did and actually be able to finish the game. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, then like the video. Also, subscribe for more, and let me know what you think in the comments. I also have a Twitter if you want to follow me on that. There's links in the description, so. But, uh, yeah, I'm working on the next video, so, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll catch you in the next one. Till then. Plague the Moon. Check it out. Dungeon Chill. Out. We'll show how to rename files, how to delete files, and how to use undelete to recover erased files. We'll also show how to use the wildcard feature. In the disk drive section, we'll show how to format a diskette.